Okay. Hi, everyone. And uh, this is our, our, our next session, which is going to look at employment and volunteering for adults with Duchenne. And we've got a, uh, a few speakers uh, lined up for this. We're going to be hearing from uh, Matthew Lanham at the uh, Euromuscular Center and um, from Benjamin James as well about his uh, recent experience as an intern. So, yes, uh, let's get started. First of all, uh, welcome to Matthew. He's going to tell us about how uh, adults with Duchenne are employed at the Euromuscular Center. Thank you very much, John, and uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, looking around the room, a lot of you were here for our session yesterday on the, uh, uh, during the adaptive technology session, um, but I'll assume that you weren't um, and give you a, a little introduction into the uh, neuromuscular center. I've got to set the scene, what that is, um, and then talk a bit about um, employment um, uh, of people with Duchenne, training opportunities for people with Duchenne, uh, volunteering opportunities, and I suppose overall our ethos oh, and, and work experience as well. So it's kind of coming at work four different ways, I suppose. Um, uh, we don't pretend to be the gurus. Uh, uh, at, as indeed yesterday, we weren't definitely the gurus about adaptive technology. Um, but I, we are a very large community of people with muscular dystrophy. Um, and uh, uh, for that reason alone, I hope that there's some nuggets in what I talk about and that there's hopefully some inspiration uh, lurking there somewhere. Um, the Neuromuscular Centre is a charity that's based in Winsford in Cheshire. We've been going nearly 30 years. Uh, I'm the chief executive there. I've been there for, well, I'm in my 13th year, so I, I've kind of got used to the place. Um, uh, my, my colleague, Alison Evans, is with me today, and she's uh, our sales manager. Mm, you think, what do we need a sales manager for? Well, you'll get to hear about why that is. Um, and uh, uh, after our talk, I, I'm shooting off, but Alison and her colleague Kay are on our stand for the rest of the day. So if you've got more questions about the practicalities or you want to come and visit us, then by all means do. We're, um, so back to what we are. We're a charity, um, community of about 1,300 families from across the UK uh, and indeed continental Europe. Um, and uh, the majority of people that we see sort of on a very regular basis are coming to us for uh, our unique physiotherapy service um, and, our, and opportunities to do exercise in our very specialist neuromuscular gym, which is wow. Um, but what makes us very different is that we don't run to a kind of medical model. Um, we're very much a work ethic is at the heart of the neuromuscular center. And um, so of the 46 people that work at NMC, um, 23 are people who have muscular dystrophy and a good chunk of those are people with Duchenne muscular dystrophy uh, or Becker muscular dystrophy. So uh, we're very heavily uh, a, a team of people uh, dominated, I suppose, by people who have condition. And uh, as well as that, about half of our trustees uh, have muscular dystrophy and more than half of my management team are people with muscular dystrophy. So we're talking about people with uh, DMD and Becker being in positions of authority in our organization and responsibility. Um, not simply uh, coming and being passive or being led by others. So uh, I think that ethos is important to stress. Um, the majority of the people that work in 
the NMC, work in our graphic design and print company, NMC Design and Print. That's been going for very nearly 30 years as well. Um, and that's a commercially competitive company. It's a social enterprise. Um, it has three aims. One, make money uh, and help support the charity. And they provide something... That's not me, yeah. Um, uh, uh, provides somewhere between 10 and 15 percent of the 1.2 million that the charity needs to run every year. Um, and uh, a second uh, social aim, I, I suppose, of the design and print company is to provide inspiration. So for young people, for families, for people yet to enter the world of work, to come and meet with the team and see that work is a realizable uh, aspiration and how it can work uh, can be a very inspiring thing. And as well as that, obviously, we're providing a lot of gainful employment for a lot of people. Sometimes we're getting the support in a mainstream graphic design studio or getting into an accessible mainstream gra graphic design studio would be a challenge. Because obviously the beauty of NMC, I say obviously, it's not obvious, one of the beauties of NMC and working at NMC is that the care and support needs are shared. So it kind of becomes uh, less, less onerous from a, a, a resource point of view. That's clumsily put, but we can talk about that. Um, so, so that's a quick romp through the, the NMC. We've got a training department where uh, Vivac yesterday gave us a fantastic testimonial. Um, thank you very much. Uh, many, many people come to the NMC and study or study remotely uh, with us. And that's an option to talk to uh, Alison and Kay about on our stand later if, if you'd like to. Um, we currently have courses running in a uh, whole range of, of life skills, but more, more popular are animation, photography, music, and our sort of house speciality of graphic design. We're looking to train people up, um, either to go off and work independently as graphic designers or to join our own graphic design company team. Um, so, uh, there's, there's clear progression at the NMC. There's that opportunity to uh, study uh, and then go on and work at our place. Um, some nuts and bolts about work. Of the uh, 23 people that work for us who have muscular dystrophy, uh, a good number of those uh, are on full salary and... Uh, well, are on full salary. Another chunk opt, it's their opt, to work under uh, DWP permitted work regulations. And does that, is anybody here an expert on that? Right. Well, you, you're familiar with this. Okay, this is a, but for most people, this is kind of a little known cul-de-sac of mm, not it's not great but a little known cul-de-sac of the, the the rules around benefits where it is possible for somebody to work um, be paid a small amount and for it to ha be completely disregarded for that income to be completely disregarded uh, and the work to be disregarded in the context of being assessed for benefits Okay, forever, for in perpetuity. I think that's how I would describe it. Yeah, my uh, understanding was you can only do that for a year, or am I incorrect on that? You're, you are, I fear, incorrect. Um, there are, you can have a higher rate, be paid a higher rate for a year, but then you can continue to be paid at a lower rate in perpetuity. Um, we don't really 
like it now because that rate hasn't changed for more than 20 years. And where it used to be an amount of money that was worth something, it really isn't now worth a great deal. And uh, we, we had a bit of a chin wag with the DWP a couple of weeks ago, actually. And it's interesting to hear that the local uh, officers of the DWP were starting to indicate that there was now some flexibility in that rate, which was, I wasn't expecting to hear that, particularly from the DWP. And I was really, really delighted. They were genuinely saying, look, we're not going to really rigorously enforce this as long as you don't take the mickey, uh, as long as it's a, you understand the whole ethos behind it and you're paying somebody a little bit more. So I'm going into a lot of detail there on something, but it's, it's important to, uh, if it may be important to you to maybe ask some questions and find out more about that. Um, we routinely uh, enable a number of work experience placements, classically year 10 uh, students at school who are uh, looking for work experience placements. It's hard enough for anybody to find a work experience placement in, in my experience. Um, and we offer a great one. Uh, so every year we'll have two or three or more uh, young men coming into our graphic design and print company and spending one or two weeks uh, as, as their work experience. It's proper work, it's into a proper company, but into an environment that understands uh, the, the needs uh, of DMD. And everybody says it's an inspiring thing to do. Everybody who does that enjoys doing that. Um, and we also offer a huge range of opportunities for people to volunteer in all sorts of varieties of roles uh, with, the, with the aim, always with the aim of making another, what I call, CVable experience. Yeah? So constantly trying to enable people to have something else um, which has been uh, uh, an achievement which is worthy of going on to a CV uh, with the aim of everybody getting a job. Our whole ethos is that we believe that we have a role to play in enabling uh, young men with Duchenne and Becker and all of the neuromuscular conditions in our case to become fully productive citizens in our world. And that's, our, that's where we start from. So at NMC, we're, we're caring, but we're not soppy. We're a work ethos. We expect people to come into work on time. We want to know why they're not in on time. We, we've got a job to do, and we're trying to be real world, and in the case of youngsters, prepare for real world. Um, so uh, we ha have a lot of fun. I don't mean to imply that we're stuffy. Um, we're a great fun workplace, but we're a workplace. And I think that's really to be stressed. I'm just going to stop for a moment because uh, I've talked about volunteering opportunities, uh, work experience opportunities, our training opportunities, and opportunities for employment, and those two types, salaried and permitted work. So I've covered all my basic points. Um, I'm just going to defer to my colleague for a moment and see if, Alison, is there anything you'd like to add to what I've said? Hello. Oh, I'll come up there. Hi, everybody. Um, I just thought you might be interested to know a bit more about, on a practical day-to-day -day level, how it actually works working for a design company when you've got NED. Um, we, are a, we, we are like any other graphic design company. We've got clients, we've got lots of important clients, we've got deadlines that we've got to meet, we've got certain amount of work that we've got to get out. That is going to be the same at the end of the day, regardless of who is working on the job. We like to say, when you come to us, you leave your MD at the door, 
obviously that's not always something that can happen, but we try and make that happen as much as we can. So as Matthew said, we have a lot of adaptive technology. We have desks that raise and lower. We have people on site who offer help and support and care throughout the day. But the thing that really makes us different and that is most important to us is we really do work as, as a team. We all work together. And I think when um, different health conditions come into play, that becomes really important because it does mean we've got a lot of part-time staff. We have a, he a head of design and a senior designer who oversee all of the work. And that means that other people can start a job communicate, pass that job on to somebody else, or we can have two or three people working on something together. And that means you do not need to be a full-time employee. And I just think that's something that's really, really important, something that makes us very different. But actually, it's a strength for us. People think maybe it's a weakness because there's not as much consistency. That's not the case, especially in a creative job. It means you've got two or three heads working on one task. You can bounce ideas back and two off one another. It's what makes us special. It's what makes us love the NMC. But it really actually helps us produce really good work as well. Um, and it allows us to take on people who might only be able to work one day a week. Other people work four days a week, short days, long days. It really doesn't matter because we have that support there. We back each other up. We work as a team. We get the job done. We have really good fun while we're doing it as well. And minibuses. Yes. They're used as well. Transport. Uh, we recently did a survey at the NMC and it really, really highlighted to us how important the transport was. We have five minibuses that go out and pick up our employees and bring them into the centre. That means a lot of people can get there that wouldn't be able to get there, but it also means that a lot of people can get there without having to rely on mums, dads, wives, husbands, brothers, sisters to bring them into work. It is an independent thing. People are coming into work for themselves. They enjoy their job. They want to be there. They're taking responsibility. Everything is down to them. You don't need to rely on somebody else, and that's what really makes it different and stand out. Thank you very much, Ali. Thank you. Are there, are there any questions? We do allow, uh, absolutely. It's, it's whatever you're comfortable with. So uh, there are a handful of people who bring their own, um, and there's a good swathe of people who uh, are very happy to come and uh, have, have become very used to our very, very stable staff team at NMC. The, um, I will just add on that, that it's, it's not like we've got care staff and that's all they do um, it's in about eight or nine different jobs uh, in the center that you're available to do care support and um, so that makes it very kind of subtle and dignified and and you know just easy it's part of the working day it's not um, that uh, well, it's just easy. Um, uh, so it's, you know, it's a small part of lots of people's jobs. Um, any other questions? Hi. So I was just going to add to that. Um, I am part of the care team at NMC, so if people do have specific questions about how that works, if you want to come and find me afterwards at our stand, I'm more than happy to chat to everybody about that. Okay. Are we, you all done with me? Well, do go along to the NMC stand later on the day, if you, on in the day, if you'd like some more information. Ali will be there, Kay will be there, and uh, uh, lots of literature and information. I hope that even if you thinking you live miles and miles away from us, I'm really hoping you'll come and visit us. Do an expedition. Come and see us. I think you'll find it's, it's worth the trip. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Just a very big thank you to, to, to Matthew there. And um, yeah, I'm hoping that uh, we can plan a DMD Pathfinders exhibition to the Neurovascular Center, definitely. So I'm gonna be talking about my uh, recent um, experience with uh, working with uh, um, Action Duchenne, uh, an internship I did um, recently over the, over the summer. Um, 
which was yeah, it was really good. Um, so yeah, I was at um, the epicenter, which is the kind of the headquarters of where Action Duchenne are based uh, in East London, uh, in in Leighton Stowe. Um, so yeah, I had to sort of travel over there and um, um, you know, uh, like what at least like once a week uh, for the internship, um, which was really really yeah, it was fun. Um, uh, so my placement uh, was a, I did a six week placement, uh, working about three days a week, although I only went into the office once or twice because traveling is, um, yeah, it's not that easy <laughs> getting across London. Uh, but um, it was really flexible, so um, I could sort of do a lot of the work, access it from home, which was really good. Um, and yeah, so I was working with the communications um, team, um, involved in content writing for um, the development of the new Action Duchenne website. Um, and I was mostly sort of describing uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, uh, which is kind of, you know, <laughs> being an expert in it. So uh, that was, yeah, that was really good. And I learned, I learned a lot um, with working with, those, with um, that team. And I got to use some sort of IT software uh, for that, which was good to learn how to use. Uh, so yeah, um, how did I make it work for me? Um, so it was good that I could work flexible hours. So um, I did, I think I started, I like, went from 11 to 2 or, th or 3 to try and miss the, the rush hour getting back. And then the other days I was at home. Um, and when I was at home, I could work a bit longer because obviously I wasn't restricted to um, uh, having to travel in and out um, and also it was quite good to be my own boss so managing my my time uh, to try and get the work done that I had to do sort of make a plan of what I was what I was doing um, and like I said yeah so not traveling when it was busy because um, yeah it's not that easy people don't kind of notice wheelchairs sometimes so you know getting people to move out of the way uh, <laughs> it's not always easy <laughs> um, but luckily, like halfway through the journey on the tube, a lot of people got off and it was a lot better um, for me. So yeah, like I said, um, working from home, that, that made it work really well. And yeah, I'd, I'd say um, within any, any job, particularly with Duchenne, um, if you can do that, if you can work from home, it does give you that flexibility, takes that pressure off having to travel in, getting tired. Um, yeah, and also, obviously, so Action Duchenne, they understand about mus uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, so, um, you know, if you need to bring your carers in or PAs, whatever, um, you know, that it's totally fine. Um, they're totally fine with that. And it just makes it more, it made it more enjoyable because sort of know the team and um, they, they, they just get it. Because um, not every organization does um, but it, it yeah it does definitely take that pressure off um, so what challenges did I have I, I wouldn't say I had any specific challenges um, it was a nice environment to work in the team was really good <laughs> you know getting to know them um, um, I'd say yeah so something I'd say is yeah you kind of decide what you want to get from uh, your internship or your whatever you're doing um, that that really helped me, and yeah, not not overworking. So obviously, thinking you don't have to work every day in the week or trying to work from home, um, that was really good to help me. And like I've talked about a bit before, the travelling, because I live in South London, so travelling to East East London was <laughs> a bit of a trek. It took a little while, but it was definitely definitely worth it um, to to go into the office to actually talk to people and not just be at home all the time, you know, working with the team. Uh, so what did I gain from this experience? So, like I said, getting to know uh, the Action Duchenne team, how they work, um, and I got to sit in meetings and just see how they, you know, communicate with each other and the different aspects of the charity. Um, yeah, and also 
I saw how the different teams they work together on certain projects. So like doing the website, um, it's not just one person. It wasn't just me. I was I was there with another intern as well. Um, uh, yeah, another girl was sort of helping me on that, and that was really good um, to do that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it helped me to build confidence in my abilities and what I can do. Um, yeah, and, and how I can work and realising, OK, you know, I can do this um, if I just think about it a bit more and manage my time. Um, and, yeah, it was really good to be part of a team um, and not just, you know, doing things by yourself, but, yeah, working within uh, a, a bigger a bigger team. Um, and yeah, it, it definitely made me think of ways of communicating and trying to educate people about Duchenne muscular dystrophy because spending my time writing about it, it, it really did make me think, how can I talk about Duchenne in an easy to understand way um, if for people who perhaps you know don't know about it? Um, and that was really, yeah, good. Uh, so for me, um, it made me realize my future ambitions of um, pursuing a career in science communication because um, my degree is a science-based degree. I'm, I'm doing um, neuroscience. So, yeah, it's definitely made me, you know, maybe sort of update my CV and um, think about where I'm going, what I want to do. Because, um, like I said, yeah, I want to pursue a career in science communication and I'm looking at applying for a graduate scheme with the Wellcome Trust, um, who I'd quite like to work for. And also, I'm looking at applying for a master's in science communication. So it's definitely inspired me to do that. Um, and yeah, so that it has been a really good experience um, to, to do that. And it definitely makes you think. And I would definitely recommend trying to you know work with Action Duchenne. They're, they're always looking for uh, new interns, and they're trying to develop that more. Um, so yeah, more people can work for. Actually, Shen and DMD Pathfinders. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Anyone got any questions or anything else? When I work from home, I find it very easy to get. Distracted, how do you dis discipline yourself? Hold on. Can I borrow your chair? Um, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm pretty disciplined, so I didn't find that a problem. But I know other people, yeah, it can be hard because there is distractions at home. You know, you can get up, do what you want, and um, it's easy to procrastinate. But uh, I managed to try and fix, say, right, I'm going to do this for a couple of hours, and then I'll have a break. So I split split it up through the day, so you have that freedom at home. That was that was nice <laughs> to have that. Definitely. That's fine. Um, I think mostly it was trying, if you do it outside of rush hour, there's not as many people um, and yeah, that makes it easier and obviously you have to organise getting the ramps and that, so you have to plan a bit, but it's mostly the busyness and people not noticing <laughs> that, you know, you can just run them over, so it's fine. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, yeah, it was quite a long journey for me, it was nearly two hours um, to do that. I managed to, but I didn't do it every day, so that helped. Okay. Okay, so um, this is when the um, such so this scheduled to finish, but I think it would be good to hear from a, a few more people, so we're just going to overrun just a little bit into into the next session so we've got a chance. I, um, I just wanted to add um, my perspective 
um, first of all, just in terms of uh, the work that I've done. Um, so I've uh, been working uh, regularly since 2009, and uh, I started off as, as a volunteer, but then uh, I got a job in 2009, which was, um, it was 16 hours a week, so I kind of, I tended to spread that over the week to, uh, to yeah, so it wasn't too much in one day. Um, I subsequently then uh, took on more work in the same company, and then I moved on to a another organization in 2014, and uh, I was doing policy and, and communications for them, and uh, then I moved to another um, job, which was with uh, Vice of the City Council as a political assistant, and I was um, advising the elected councillors on policy issues, which um, was good, because it was what I uh, studied my degree in, but um, yeah, I found it um, quite quite challenging and not necessarily the the kind of job that I wanted to do. And that's when I um, I was looking for another job at the time. And um, as, as Pathfinders, we really wanted to, to grow. So I have ended up working for, for Pathfinders now. So and that, that's kind of been my journey. When I was at the, the council, I was actually working uh, full time. So I think in the previous jobs, it had always been part time and I'd eventually Kind of found that I could do do more and more, and I wanted to try out what it was like part, uh, full time, and to see whether or not I could I could do that. And uh, I did. I managed it for a year. Um, I was working one of the days from home, but the the rest of the days I was working in the office. Um, I tended to work um, from ten till six, um, just so I could start a little bit later. That made it easier easier for me. Um, and I said. I, you know, I could do it, and I did do it for a year, but I would say I didn't really have much of a social life or anything else in my life other than work. And also, I don't, you know, I think I neglected certain aspects of uh, kind of my health, like, you know, I didn't have time to do physio and, and what have you. So, you know, I proved to myself that I could do it, but that doesn't necessarily mean I want to do it. So um, I've since kind of stepped down to, to a part-time role again, which I find is actually a much better kind of balance for me in terms of in terms of managing everything. Um, to enable me to work, I use um, part of my, my care budget to employ an admin PA. So um, because I get some money from access to work to help with, with the PAs, that gives me a bit of um, a bit of wiggle room in my budget. So I employ someone uh, now for eight hours a week, although when I was full time, it was 16 hours a week and basically they're there to help me with the various tasks that I have as kind of uh, an adult living independently. And, you know, when I'm working, I've got less time. So I can get, um, get my admin PA to help manage my, my other PAs in terms of doing all the kind of recruitment side of things. But also, you know, just things like, you know, p picking up my prescriptions for the pharmacy and all, all sorts of little things like that that just make it easier for me to then, then focus on work. So, um, you know, there were certain strategies I used to enable me to, to work. Um, so I just wanted to um, just go through some of the work that I've done in terms of the actual tasks that have been involved, just so you can get a sense of um, the kind of things that you can do with, with Duchenne. And I mean, the, the, this is stuff that I did, you know, a year ago, so it's the same level of kind of need that I, I have currently. I was able to do you know, any kind of office work that was computer-based. Um, I was able to do teaching, training, speaking at events and conferences, facilitating or participating in focus groups, uh, minuting meetings, although that was more of a challenge. I could still do that in my uh, political assistant job by recording uh, the the meetings when they were happening and then using voice recognition to write minutes. Um, carrying out research interviews, um, writing up reports on, well, anything and everything really. Um, updating and moderating social media, um, interviewing candidates for jobs, um, directing a film, um, managing and supervising employees in, in my different roles, um, and chairing meetings. I mean, that's by no means a kind of exhaustive list of what adults with Duchenne can do, but you know, that that's what I've done and that's uh, 
just gives you a sense of the fact that there's actually quite a lot that maybe you wouldn't think um, you could do, but actually you can with the right support and the right equipment and figuring out how to do it. And I just wanted to mention a bit about the challenges. So um, obviously finding a job in the first place can be quite challenging, um, particularly finding you know a good employer who's, who's willing to support you. Um, I think managing PAs alongside a job can be can be a challenge, particularly when you need to you know recruit new people and spend time training them. That can you know take time away when when you want to be working. Um, I think I was actually quite lucky when I was working full time that I didn't have any major uh, PA problems where I needed to do a load of recruitment at once. But I've kind of been going through that for the last few weeks, and I'm really glad I'm working part time because I don't think I could have could have juggled both. Um, I think just recognizing that um, the employer might not always be that enthusiastic about reasonable adjustments and making adjustments for you. But I think, um, you know, I've, I've recognized that it depends on the organization, but, you know, they've, they've all made the adjustments. Some have been more enthusiastic than others, but I think even the ones that weren't, as soon as they saw that actually it didn't affect my ability to work, you know, um, doing a, a day from home, I was still just as productive. I think um, so once they, they see that, they, they get more on board with it, but it can sometimes, you've got to kind of push to actually get the adjustments, the adjustments made. And then finally, I just wanted to mention about access to work. So um, that's a fund that you can get to fund various things like travel to work and also for a support worker um, so i've it's, since i've been working all the time I've been working i've had um, access to work funding for a support worker to be with me at at work um it's got a bit more challenging so they're not they, when i started off they would fund someone to do personal care for the um, whole time that it was there they're now a bit funny about that it can only be a certain level of personal care so uh, you know you have to be if you slightly um, um, well just clever in terms of how you think about the support that you need because yes they might be providing personal care but also they're doing things like um, y you know helping you to sort through papers um, taking notes for you and what have you so it's it's those tasks that you need to focus on um, in terms of needing support, because that's what you'll get the get the support with. Um, I think, and you can also get, use access to work to get equipment. So uh, things like voice recognition technology, adjustable desks. Um, I got a, a headset and a, a switcher that allow me to easily switch between the phone and the the computer for for voice recognition. So that was that was really useful. And I think um, the one thing I would say that is, you know, the best thing is having a good employer who really understands um, wh what it means to have a, a disabled employee and recognizes the value um, that, that we can bring and also is willing to make the adjustments to, to make it possible, basically. So, yeah, that's uh, my experience. But I, just like to maybe hear from a couple of people in the, in the audience who quite have done something interesting or have have done uh, maybe uh, different pieces of work. Ah, over there. Hi, John. Um, my son Philip. Hopefully, will be working with John in in the future on social media. However, one thing I'll point out that's been very useful for Philip in that. Yes, he's done a lot of volunteering, but up until a point, you can only do so much volunteering. Great for your CV, but you want to be earning like every single person. And what we've found is the Prince's Trust is absolutely brilliant. And that's up until the age of 25. And Philip did uh, a robotics course, which he absolutely enjoyed. And he now has a mentor going forward from them. And he also has a mentor from Microsoft. And that is the way forward. You go to the big wigs and they point you in the right direction and keep banging on at it. And we, John, you were talking about um, access to work. Well, we actually got Philip's um, wheelchair funded through that. 
because they said, um, this is through Surrey, and they said, oh no, we don't fund, fund wheelchairs. And I pointed them to their own legislation that says, well, really? How do you expect them to get to work without a wheelchair? But you know what it's like, the default position is no, and then you have a big fight and win. But just my thoughts. Yeah, I, I think that's why I've certainly had experience of fighting with them, access to work. And yeah, it, it does, you have to do it as with any other kind of funding thing. In, in terms of the, the volunteering, I think it's very much depends on, you know, the adult themselves. What, what do you want? You know, what do you want for your life? Because I think it's um, perfectly reasonable if you want to volunteer to, to, to volunteer your time and uh, that, that can be an end goal in itself because uh, you know I think it's incredibly rewarding but um, yeah other people like uh, myself you know I, I want to feel like yeah you know I, I enjoy getting paid for the for the work I do so very much you know I, I want to, to have employment and uh, volunteering was a, as a kind of pathway for me into employment but um, Having said that, I still volunteer now because I think that's you know something that is is rewarding. So I I volunteer on a ad hoc basis for another organisation as well as as well as working. Okay, I think um, Aaron was going to come to you. Yeah. Well. <laughs> well, I'm on an in support supported internship at a company called ICOM, which is a big uh, construction firm. And I do three days a week there, Monday to Wednesday. Uh, which I enjoy. And I'm doing AutoCAD. So I'm like designing bridges. That's it. That's great, Raph. And where did you... How did you get into that? How did that work? Uh, I, through college, because okay. they support people into work. Mm -hmm. uh, what what college are you at? Oh, it's called the Hive. Oh. Well, and that's at Wilson Stewart School in Birmingham. Yeah, that's really excellent. And how long are you doing that for? Uh, I've been on it six months so mm -hmm. far. Hopefully. Get an apprenticeship or paid yeah. work. Oh, that's that's fantastic. It's good to hear that. Yeah, people are able to access this, and you are getting the right the right support. So good luck with it. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wanted to? Um, I've never actually been fortunate to work, but. Um, I've certainly been on full benefit since I was quite young and, and I found that that's been enough to support me but what I found is I, I had a need to to give back because the system was um, providing so well and I got into volunteering and I found that that role gave, gave me some that I could get back. I worked for a disability uh, organisation around support and, and I very much enjoyed doing that and it, it just got me into volunteering and then I volunteered for DMD Pathfinders of course and I've always found it very fulfilling and felt that my benefit level was enough that, that, that I didn't find I needed work but I, I still needed to do something yeah yeah no I, I think um, volunteering is it, it can be very rewarding and I know if anything changed with my health and I didn't feel like I could you know consistently commit to to, to working um, that I would definitely still want to volunteer. So, uh, you know, I think um, that is something that is, yeah, very, very fulfilling. And I think it, um, yeah, I, I, I can't speak pos more positively about my, my volunteering, ex volunteering experiences. I've really, was, I've always really enjoyed them. And um, yeah, you can make it, you can make it fit around your life, which I think is really good. Mm. Okay. 
Okay. Well, um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone.